Hey guys, Armin Gun here today with a video on the kick-ass assault rifles of the 1970s. I've got five for you, plus two wild cards that kind of count, kind of not. Well, you can make the argument, but I do have examples-ish of them here, so we're going to talk about them, as well as a real deal or suitable stand-in for the other five. Now guys, what's cool was that the 1970s was something of a golden age for assault rifles. And of course, there's a bit of a uh, renaissance, if you will, going into the late 70s and early 80s as well, and into the 90s too. Like, basically every decade has some pretty cool assault rifles that have come out of it. However, in the 1970s, a lot of the legends were born, or were at least available and starting to pick up steam. We've got a couple that precede that today, but uh, the vast majority are late 60s, early 70s. And yes, I'm intentionally using the word assault rifle because I'm specifically not referring to semi-automatic civilian sporting rifles. No, I'm talking about the real deal, military or otherwise used firearms. Because that's how they were born. Most of these didn't even exist in semi-automatic form until, well, quite a bit later. Anyways, guys, we'll go through these one by one. I'll give you some fun facts, show you the controls, you know, just enough to make you a little dangerous, as one should be. And uh, then I'll attempt to pick a favorite and uh, we'll go from there. Let's start things off with the AR-18, dubbed the most successful failure of the OG assault rifles. But first, a quick shout out to our 15 second sponsor, Mira Safety. They have the coolest gas mask and respirators you can get, and given the times, you might want to check them out. Affiliate link in the description below. Much like odd designs are born out of, you know, skirting or dealing with stupid gun laws, the AR-18 was developed to, uh, not infringe on any of the AR-15 patents that Armalite sold to Colt. And to make it a little bit more interesting, the AR-15 was winning a lot of contracts for militaries at the time, but was very difficult to produce by poor countries. So they went about designing something very simple that has been compared to late World War II German manufacturing techniques. Basically simple stampings welded or riveted together. Now, these saw service in a few small instances, but they really weren't very successful. Most of their limited success was found on the civilian market as the AR-180. But the internal operating system that this thing used did go on to inspire many other great platforms such as the G36, the 416, man, just, just a ton of others. And that is why it is dubbed the most successful failure. But hey, it's got a folding stock, so cool beans. Reciprocating charging handle. Last round bolt hold. Mag release. No bolt release, so you have to drop the mag or insert a loaded one. Pull back on here. Let's it go home, selector, and trigger. Now you can't talk about the AR-18 without talking about the AR-15. The OG Stoner. This thing is fantastic. I love it. And even though I probably am not the biggest fan of the original, it is still a beaut to shoot in full auto. Very smooth, soft shooting. Part and parcel to the very long recoil system, direct impingement gas system. But the early guns were plagued with some problems, not all of which were their own fault. At least as I understand it, a lot of the problems he saw in Vietnam shouldn't have actually happened. A big part was that the powder used in the ammunition was not suitable for the environment there and actually wasn't even what was spec'd, or at least used in the trials when these guns were trialed domestically. This was exacerbated by many of the guns not being shipped with cleaning kits. Probably the greatest benefit to the AR-15 is its constant evolution over the last basically 60 years. Here we have a modern SR-15, which stands for Stoner Rifle. And this thing is just an immense refinement. And uh, well, if I had this thing to pick back in the 70s, there would be no competition. This thing, hands down. Even today, this right here ranks among one of my favorite modern rifles. Charge it. Ping pong paddle bolt release. Mag release. Safety selector. And trigger. Now, it wouldn't be a assault rifle video without the AK-47. Don't at me, bro. I know AKMs are by far the more popular. We also have to talk about the AK-74, because in 1974, well, it's not just named the 74 for nothing. It was out then, too, and we'll cap the assault rifles shown in this video at, well, 1974. We'll stick with the early 70s, late 60s. Because we're saving the Steyr AUG, AKA the STG-77, again, not just a coincidence, and the FNC, 1979, for later videos because they have been secured and will be on their way here later this year. Anyways, our quote-unquote AK-47 
762 by 39 this little guy still counts as an intermediate cartridge much like the 556 and thus in the select fire platform does uh constitute an assault rifle now the ak-47 is probably one of the easiest guns to just hand someone and say hey here is gun go fight or survive whatever whatever you want to say but this gun is undeniably simple this is an underfolder example boop the button swing this down this too and we are in business though of course it's in business all the time because you can fire reload whatever this thing folded as well in fact that's a pretty good tagline for the ak ak always open for business maybe a bit dark but it uh it's a super ubiquitous rifle around the world millions upon millions made by different countries and slightly different patterns this one here is a yugoslavian m70 ab1 i believe it's the thinner stamped receiver but man she is a beaut she's got the grenade cut off sights oh how cool is that and then for controls we have safe <coughs> and fire mag release down here the paddle of course these uh rock and lock in super satisfying racky rack and if you go all the way back on this guy there is a last round bolt hold it's only because you're using yugo mags and it's just catching on the follower rather than a follower activated bolt catch so as soon as you release the mag boom she goes shut ak does have nice trigger though Ooh. so guys ak-47 in 7.62x39 or if you want to 545 it go for the ak-74 and what's next on our list why none other than the galil boom giggity this is a sexy rifle and naturally following the ak it's better at least in my opinion we have a lot of cool things here a lot of improvements including a left side safety selector which is awesome as well as an upswept charging handle this thing is also really cool if you watched my last ultimate gun room slash weapon expansion pack video i did a little comparison side by side on the galil versus ak for charging and why this upswept charging handle is basically just amazing milled receiver this thing is slick as all get out this right here is for an optics mount we've got a nice hooded and extended magazine release 556 five, this time rock and lock it's even got a little protrusion on the right side so you can uh boop it from there carry handle folding stock that is beefy enough to be a formidable weapon itself integral bipod and yes of course the iconic bottle cap opener did i mention night sights though arguably no longer nighttime ready that tritium is worn out this is the beautiful three-way love child that resulted in rubbing an ak ar and falpera together in the deserts of israel and when i say ak i mean valmet which was probably the greatest ak by far at the time i 100 percent am in love with this platform and i'm super glad they made a bunch of other versions such as the sar and the mar the little micro guy and a big beefy version in 308 also the south africans made their own version the Swedes had a version there were just tons of awesome guns with the Galil and they've since gone on to evolve into the Galil Ace which is now on its Gen 2 pattern for the next guy we need to reach into the safe here with this guy no not the grease gun just beside him though we have the HK 53 mm. all that roller delayed goodness and here's a mag because guns just look kind of boring without them now specifically I'm not talking about the 53 in this video it's just here because this is the version I have. The appropriate version of this would have been the HK-33, which came to life in the late 60s. The 33 is the full barrel length style, and that one would have been considered the assault rifle. This little guy would have actually been considered a submachine gun at the time. No joke, same thing with the crank and the Galil Micro or MAR. So anyways, just imagine this thing, but longer. Guys, this thing is freaking sweet. Surprisingly enough, it is pretty controllable even on that guy to shoot but this guy right here is essentially the scaled down version of the g3 or the mp5 on 556 steroids aka the thick p5 it makes use of that same roller delay system and man i just freaking love this thing known for being very reliable even in the short platform as well so obviously here's your selector paddle mag release additionally if you're a sasquatch you can uh, do the button release there as well and everyone's favorite the HK slap charging handle by the way this right here forward assist trigger guys that's it for the top five now for my two wild cards you gotta love it when a plan comes together guys this is the mini 14 which technically was around in the early 70s 
However, this guy kind of took the opposite approach of the typical assault rifle, starting life as a modern sporting rifle. So it came out as a semi-automatic only platform in the early 70s, and then at the end of the decade was released as the AC 556 in a select fire format. This one does not have that, but it does have the cool side folding, A-team style stock. More or less a scaled down M14, hence Mini 14, it shares many of the same controls. Safety selector is in here. You have a very stiff and kind of hidden, tucked away their low profile mag release. The mags are kind of a downside of this thing. They can be tricky to get in there and beware of non Ruger ones like this one, which can have some reliability issues. It's a reciprocating side charger, but it has a last round bolt hold, which is nice. And it is built into the system. So to release, you either have to have a loaded mag or remove the empty mag, pull back, let her go home. Nice long sight radius. This is an AccuStrut to help with the barrel wobble and the harmonics so that this does a little better than Minute of Barn. And the trigger on this one, really quite nice. Guys, we saved the best for last, the Stoner 63-ish. I wish because not quite the Stoner 63, but as close as most of us are going to get. This is the Rob Arms M96 and uh, man, what a cool firearm. Basically meant to take all the same cues and basically the same operating system from the original. It's once again all stainless steel construction, meticulously welded, very high quality, and awesome gun. These also have quick change barrels. And yes, if you have the really cool and very rare brand kit adapter, you can convert this to top feed. Very cool. Maybe they'll resurface at some point, and maybe we'll see some belt fed kits. Mag release over here, takes Stanags, non-reciprocating charging handle, no manual bolt release though, so you do have to uh, drop the mag, give her a little tug, let her go home. Now, while I would consider this probably the best, uh, most modular assault rifle at the time, while they were liked by the SEALs in Vietnam, they didn't see widespread adoption, and tragically, most of the remaining original examples following the Vietnam War were destroyed. Now, there are still about 150 or something like that originals out there. Hopefully, I'll get to use either my buddy Richard, the Real Deal Movie Arms, or maybe Kevin Brittingham's in a video in the future. And maybe Knights will re-resurrect them as well, as they still have, I think, the tools and know-how how to make more. Now, is that realistic? Probably not. But I can dream, Harold. So guys, in light of not being able to pick the Stoner 63 as my favorite, due to sheer unobtainium, and while I'm incredibly tempted to pick the Galil ARM, which, when I started this video, I thought I was going to do, and maybe I will once I get to shoot one full auto, once Movie Armament sends me, uh... Well, we'll leave it at that. But... I'm gonna have to go with the HK-33. We'll say I have shot this again as intended and I was blown away by how surprisingly controllable and reliable such a short platform is. Shorter is always uh, harder. Oh, there's some bad jokes in there. So I can imagine if it's longer, it's gonna be that much. Oh man, I can't, I can't even say it. You guys know where I'm going though. So we'll leave it, uh, we'll leave it at that. Ironically though, the HK-33 wasn't adopted that widely as a, uh, Assault rifle of the time, so curious. But as I get more of these guns in and get more time behind them myself and shoot them side by side, I will uh, further refine my opinions and continue to bring you guys better content. Guys, feel free to yell at me in the comments below. Tell me why I'm wrong. Just be constructive when you tell me why I'm wrong or why you disagree with me. And let me know what you really think. Let me know if I missed any guns from the early 70s. And out of these seven, well, the Mini 14 really doesn't count. I just knew you guys would enjoy seeing that sexy folder. So out of the six, let me know which you guys would pick and why. Please also stop in the description, check out the various channel partners, affiliates, and discount codes for your own pleasure. Catch you on the next one, Arm and Gun, out. Boom diggity.